Hi, this is a Technology Ridecast. I'm Mark Farley, and our special guest this afternoon is Alex Galbraith. How are you doing, Alex? I'm good, thanks, Mark. How are you? Yeah, good. Thanks for coming on. So the hot topic this week is that new Seagate 60 terabyte drive. Um, have you had a chance to look at it, and what do you think its impact is going to be on the industry? Uh, it's pretty interesting. The thing that really impressed me was obviously the power to, to capacity ratios that you're going to be able to get out of these things. You know, working in the service provider industry is a really big thing for us, but I can't really see these necessarily being used for primary workloads, more maybe archiving and secondary tier, maybe uh, media storage and things like sneaker net type uh, solutions. Yeah, like uh, Amazon, what do you call that? Um, that suit- Snowball. Oh, Snowball. Yeah, this That's the one. <laughs> data in a suitcase where you ship it over. Exactly, yeah. yeah. If you can get 50 terabytes in something that's about the size of your hand, um, it's going to be a lot more convenient to take one with you on the airplane when you want to move it from uh, AWS and out. Yeah, very interesting. So how do you think this changes the uh, data protection landscape? It's a similar challenge that we're facing with object storage these days, which is that the data volumes are just getting so massive. I mean, how can you possibly, for example, back up that data when you're talking about you know, data quantities uh, of this scale, you could imagine that the rate of change on them was going to be pretty high as well. So being able to look at backing up that data in a, in a single night or, or even changes might be beyond the capability of a typical backup solution. I'm starting to think that maybe once you're reaching these kind of multi-petabyte scale solutions, it's going to come down to having to look at what do we do about ensuring the durability of the data in the first place. You know, if you can increase durability of the data by using things like erasure coding, it's going to uh, reduce the likelihood of you having to you know, utilize your backup solutions. But on top of that, when it's 60 terabytes of data in one go, how quickly can you rebuild that data? Say you're using you know, RAID, I don't really see that taking 24 hours or so to rebuild a drive is not really that feasible. So again, you've got to kind of look at other technologies to increase the rate at which we can get that data back quick. It's almost like we need to entirely rethink the way that we protect data from the ground up. Well, considering that, what kind of customers are likely to use this device then? Well, I could see um, things like media companies. So, I mean, one example would be Netflix. Um, you know, the, you can get quite reasonable read rates and random read rates out of these drives. They don't, they've not produced the stats around how decent the write rates are, and I suspect that's because they're probably not very good. Uh, it's the kind of thing that, say, a Netflix might use for their caching devices on the edge. You might also see people using it for photo media. So when you go onto Facebook, for example, you might not look at a photo for two years, but then you go back and you expect it to appear almost instantaneously. And using tape and, uh, and slower S3, that's just not really feasible. Um, whereas these kind of technologies might actually help to accelerate those pieces of data you don't access often, but when you want them, you want them now. Yeah, I can see where it would be a great fit for Facebook. You know, that uh, yep. that seldom access data, but when someone wants to access it, you know, they don't want to wait 15 seconds for it. They want to see it, you know, in one or two seconds. That's reasonable. Exactly. So, Alex, this is great having you on. Thanks for your insights on this drive. My pleasure. Thanks very much, Mark.